the spotted, laughing, Lion King, Crocuta, Crocuta, Hyena. Hyenas have a very, very powerful bite and they have a very powerful skull and they have very peculiar teeth. If we go over them again, this is the, uh, the, the mouth, the mouth of the hyena. Those are its canines. It's got two on the bottom, two on the top. Those are it right there, and you and me. Incisors, premolars, premolars, molar. Hyenas eat meat so that their jaws are kind of working in a scissor-like manner to cut through meat. They use those carnassial teeth to do that. But they're much much more elongated and developed than in all the other hyenas. It has these premolars, which are, which occlude in a fashion where the two hold the bone and then this other one comes crashing down with tremendous force onto whatever food object happens to be in the mouth. These three, this complex, right here. The incisor battery, as you can see, are very much hooked and they are very grabby. There's a very, they're very powerful. They can they have this particularly large sagittal crest which has, which houses these giant muscles, uh, the, the masser and the temporalis and its occipitum. See, if we look at, like, this is the master process, that's the equivalent structure on you and me, that would be right there as a landmark. It is often portrayed as a stingy, skulking, stinky scavenger, and it is just that. It is a very good scavenger. That only adds to, to their bad image, um, not only in context of their relationship with lions, wherein actually lions steal most of their carcasses, but hyenas also will intimidate and um, steal and sometimes even kill lions, just as vice versa. And that will be covered in another video. But it is an almighty hunter as well. It, it is an almighty endurance runner in a, in a, in a, in a long-term chase wherein they're doing this comfortable lope that they can seek out. It's usually an animal that's either young, weakened, or old. Hyenas don't have claws. The main organ of prehension in a hyena is powerful, super efficient technology. This carnassial tooth that has evolved is all meant for shearing, scissoring through skin, meat, sinew, and gristle. And it is an incredibly powerful technique combined with a very mobile neck that can get this, this mouth to be twisting and to be ripping at the same time. This is a tool that procures itself food. This movement allows for landscapes to remain healthy and vibrant. It allows for bones to be disposed of. It allows the sick, the weak, the injured, the gross, the diseased, the disgusting to be disposed of by this reducing factor of evolution. But the key thing about that is, is it takes a lot of effort to build a bone, a structure like this. It takes a long time to build a hyena child. There's a lot of risks involved, and usually only the most dominant females can successfully raise their offspring. But when you're a spotted hyena and you involve a social dimension to the, the whole hyena morphology, you add this domain where you're having to compete with other members of your species that are of the same clan, but goddammit, the food 
gets eaten so fast and it's just gone. So only the females that were able to, the likely evolutionary uh, force that led to these more badass females was motherhood, was the necessity for the females to dominate and, uh, and queen it over the carcass. They have to impose their reputation. They have to be there for their children. They have to be there when their children are exploring and getting in the face of some adult. And they're in the thick of the fray of a dominance ritual involving individuals that are much more powerful than themselves. But because they have their mother's rank, they have full confidence about their authority. So they are complex, incredibly smart, and perhaps one of the most sociable and socially intelligent and socially complex carnivores and mammals. They live together in clans that are structured as such. It's top female first, and then the female hierarchy, and then the male hierarchy. The females uh, are dominant over the males. They're bigger than the males. They have peculiar genitalia. The females have um, a clitoris that is like an erectile penis that is bigger, longer, and thicker than those of males. They have a pseudo-scrotum even. They have these two masses. They usually have two cubs. And hyenas have, a very, have another, yet another peculiarity of being born a full set of, of canines and incisors ready to bite and ready to kill the sister will always kill her sister. The sister will submit the brother always, and the brothers will stay. You know, the males leave when they're when they're mature enough, and then the females inherit the rank of the mother. And all of those nuances and all the, all those relationships are known and have to be stored and have to be remembered and have to be, you know, these cards have to be played. And that is due to the development of sociality in the spotted hyena. A strong skulled beast. A beast that takes a long time to develop its bones. Evolution and through its comparative function can we understand its role in our lives, in the lives of the beings that surround us, in the, in the creation of landscapes that are nutritious, abundant, and from which we ultimately can benefit from. So it is with great excitement that I present this body of knowledge, and it is with great anticipation that I await the release of Lion King, which I think is single-handedly the most attention hyenas have gotten ever, uh, in, in a long time.